the other aspect of the, the kind of future of coding that I kind of liked is, is it getting harder? What are your thoughts on that? I mean, it's certainly the, the, the breadth of, we, I think there's sort of these two, it's a hard question to answer because again, there's sort of two contradictory um, developments. So one is that we're going further up the stack and, you know, we, we have this abstraction and I don't need to know assembler anymore. And I'm very happy about not knowing assembler. But on the other hand, the, the breadth of what we need to hold in our heads is getting bigger and bigger. So it used to be that you needed to know assembler and then, you know, you needed to know just a few target systems that your assembler was going to and that was it but now if you look at something like the cncf cloud landscape you know it just makes you want to cry and then you laugh and then you you cry again <laughs> um and and with ai we, we've got sort of a similar one there's um i think it's called oh, i can't remember what the acronym stands for it's i think machine learning artificial intelligence and data landscape which the acronym for that is the mad landscape and you look yeah. at it and it is the mad landscape <laughs> so and and the, like the number of programming languages that we have to choose from is huge so it used to be you know you could you could know a programming yeah. language and you could be a cobol developer but now you can't just be certainly not for you know for a sustained period of your career programmed just in one language and even if you do program just in one language all of the stuff around you like the libraries and the frameworks is is just so huge so like if you um if you look at npm.org in i think in like 2000 there was 1.2 million libraries there and now there's like 2 million libraries like it just it's going up and up and up and then you know the things that you knew have that another sort of challenge that we have as as we're sort of going through this kind of middle stage of maturity as well is the abandonware so you know you have the beautiful open source library and it solves your problem and then you realize that it hasn't been updated for five years and it's stuffed full of cves and you need to rewrite to solve the same problem just because the landscape under you has crumbled slightly yeah but i i i, I had that that last problem very recently i i, I have a pet project and there was this lovely little um, web socket uh, open source project that I was using to do async communication to the web. And uh, it stopped working in later versions of Java and, and it wasn't being ma maintained anymore. So I'm busy trying to see if I can find the time to rewrite it at the moment. <laughs> but yeah, and, and, uh, yeah, I know exactly yeah. what you mean. Yeah. The, if, the, if the, other, at, the other thing, that, sorry, go ahead. So I was just going to say, if you look at like the business model of something like Red Hat or any, you know, open source company, yeah. you know, it sort of seems like, well, how can you possibly make money <laughs> selling software that is yeah. free and open source? And, and the, the, you know, the value proposition, one is secure su supply chain, but then the other part of the value proposition is that it doesn't go away like yeah. so much of the, you know, free as in yeah, yeah. beer stuff does. Yeah. It's it's a, it's a bit like having Patreon subscribers for my YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, the the other thing that I think the other aspect of this thing about it getting harder that I think is interesting. So so when I was when I was writing my book on modern software engineering, I I, I did some a, a little bit of research that I intended to put in the book but didn't make the book in the end. Um, it didn't really fit in in the right way, but. I thought it would be an interesting experiment to try writing a simple web app, kind of a you know, straightforward CRUD style web app um, in a modern, up-to-date tool set and stack and in the technologies that I was using in the mid-1990s. Mm. Um, and I did that and it was about... The, the 1990s version was about a quarter of the amount of code as the version that I wrote in JavaScript and Angular and all of those kinds of things, using Java and JSP and CSS and those sorts of JavaScript for, for the front end and those kinds of tools versus um, a, a modern UI framework and all of that. It was more code and it took, it took me longer. Partly that was huh. probably because I was more familiar with the 1990s version. But also, it was more. There was there was just more stuff to deal with, and sure, I got more from it. It was better um, web browser neutral, mm. uh, I'm sure, than the code that I wrote. But we don't always make things easier, which seems silly. <laughs> yeah, I I feel I feel really 
conflicted about this one because because I've, I've heard sort of I haven't seen the actual experiment which is fascinating in terms of like how big that difference is but you know you, you see this argument a lot and you see it for example something like the react framework where people go this is just so huge it makes it big it makes it harder what problem were we even trying to solve and let's yeah. go back to html um and I think perhaps because I'm a natural optimist, I, I find it really uncomfortable, this idea that we're not making things better, even though there is evidence that, that we're not. And I think you're right that sometimes what we're, we're getting is something that's more subtle. So we're getting, you know, better security or we're getting better browser, you know, compatibility or or something like that. Um, but yeah, it, it does seem that we sort of, we try and make things better and we make it worse, which is just yeah. sad. It seems to me it's the kind of complex adaptive system thing. You prod it in one place and it pops out in another and all of those kind of, those sorts of things. And that the pressures on a successful open source producer are kind of different. You, you want to keep releasing new stuff. And so you end up growing something like Spring, which I thought started out as a nice, simple thing. And now he's so massive and overcomplicated. I don't want to use it, to be honest. Uh, and, and 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 that seems like a common sort of trend uh, very often. And I'm a, I'm a I'm old, and so I have a limited memory these days. So I, I want uh, I want stuff that's easy to think about. I, I, I want I want the surface area of you know the tools that I use. To be simple enough to help me, and you know, no more complicated than that idea. Ideally, clever, but not not but easy to use. Yeah, and simplicity is is absolutely the hardest thing to achieve, and it's hard to achieve, and it's even harder to maintain because you're right that yeah. there is there's always new feature requirements. There's always and there's just always this sort of you know gravitational accumulation of, of cruft in both in a, in a code base, but then also in, ter in the user ex interface. Yeah. And I, th I think what makes it hard to talk about simplicity is, is that there's sort of two kinds of simplicity, isn't there? So there's this sort of, I think, you know, going back to that argument of I, I tried to do it the old way and it, it was much simpler, but was I actually doing a like for like equivalent? Yeah. You know, sometimes you can do something where you say, okay, I've, I've just re-implemented this, you know, using basic HTML, using C, whatever, look how small it is. And you've actually, you haven't implemented the same thing. You've just implemented the, you know, the really naive equivalent that looks superficially the same, but isn't. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's sort of one argument about, oh, we're, you know, we need to be simpler. But then on the other hand, you do get the, the cases where, it, the system is so elegant and you do have something that did achieve everything that it needed to and it did it while getting rid of a whole bunch of external complexity and a whole bunch of pitfalls for the user and that kind of thing and I think that those systems are really really fantastic. This clip was taken from my podcast The Engineering Room with Dave Farley a monthly podcast with some of the brightest minds in software engineering. You can find full episodes on all your favourite podcast platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts and Amazon Music. Your support helps us to bring the, you these regular episodes, so please leave your positive review on your preferred podcast platform to help us to continue to grow and bring you great guests and their insights. Thank you very much for listening.